Gaming Division. Hey there, welcome to Gaming Division. I am Cam Ryan. Today we're going to do a little bit more unboxing for Among the Stars Revival. If you are unfamiliar with this, this is a game by Artipia Games. Um, it's a draft mechanic space station building game. And uh, they've gone through quite a few. I think this is supposed to be the last expansion, uh, and then they started a new game. Um, because, really, even I'm a little <laughs> skeptical of uh, how many more expansions you can tack on to this. Uh, even the first few, like when I discovered the game, there were already several. Uh, I was like, how do you play all these? And the, the idea is that you don't. They're options. Um, and if you try to add too many in, you can scare off new players, and quite frankly, I've done a little bit of that. It's I, I really enjoy the game, though, and I think it's got some great expansions. Um, real quick, go put that back there. There are some extra goodies that they sent me. They didn't send me the big bag. I just stuck them all in there. Um, yay! So what these are, in the game, your space station runs off reactors. Uh, you always start with uh, one reactor as your main reactor. And because they've added uh, support for so many players, they've got all these extra reactors. Now, I don't know if the intent is to, uh, as you add reactors to the space station, use the extras. But there is a color for each one on the board. And that's down. Um, but the black and white ones, I'm not sure. So I don't know if they expanded it to eight players or if they stuck at the the six. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put these here. I'll grab the red one real quick. Do it. All right, we'll do that. That's what the, the reactors look like in all their glory. They also sent these little pieces. And I think these are supposed to be track markers. Uh, yeah, because they fit on top of each other. So there's going to be... Uh, so yeah, they, they definitely have eight-player support now. So that's definitely... Uh, looks like it's a thing. So let's go ahead and put these here as well. Real quick, that's what the, the reactor looks like if you wanted a closer view. Go ahead and put it on that camera as well. And the player marker miniature. It's not easy model to represent. For whatever reason, they also sent a bunch of these tokens for the, the different rooms. I can't remember if it's a mechanic that the tokens were misprinted for, or if it's a reprint of the old tokens uh, for the ambassador stuff, because I think there were some issues with like how they were balanced because like uh, on these uh they've got they're two-sided let me go ahead and just pull one out uh as so i can show you what i'm talking about on that side it represents military and there we go represents military and on this side it represents business and there's got to be a even number of those for each of the different com combinations and there's five different colors so if i'm Doing my math, there should be 125. That doesn't seem right, because that's... Maybe we're not counting duplicates. Yeah, so you can't... You take out duplicates. What's five choose five? It's been a while since I've had to do any mathematics like that. Let's just be honest. Um, they also sent these little black... Spaceships, and I cannot remember what they are for, but that shows you how small they are. We'll go ahead and put one there. That's the top. You can see the two fins there. Um, that's what they look like. I, I don't know. I think those are supposed to be the ambassador shuttles, but um, I don't know. The, my impression was that all the, the plastic stuff was to represent things that already existed, but they wanted to give someone a little bit extra for supporting them this far out. So go ahead and grab your knife or trusted scissors. And let's get this plastic unwrapped. Always cut away from you. And be gentle and not forceful so you don't cut your box. Um, or components inside if it happens to be one of those types of boxes. 
basket. We're in that plastic. It's like Christmas every episode that we do one of these. All right, so we'll go ahead and put the knife down. Oh, the box is a little banged up. Uh, that's my fault, I'm sure. But we're going to get that slide. We're going to get that slide. New box smell. That doesn't look like it could be me. I mean, that's maybe if I put some pressure there, but it looks like it's bowed out. So let's see what's in here and see if anything might have done that. Of course, we get our cool little rule book. They're really good about keeping it short. Um, and you know what? This is actually important. I should figure out if this is uh, required to have the original game. So one moment. Clarification, this can be played standalone, but you can also add it to the original game. So, this rule book, being as thick as it is, is actually the original rule book plus uh, some expansion notes. And if you look at this, they really waste some paper. It's really spaced out. Uh, the text is a decent reading size, so you're not killing your eyes. Like, they put the extra paper in to help you as the consumer. Um, and I'm, I'm all for digital, but uh, I, as far as rule books go, I really kind of respect that. Um, I now have a second one of these boards. Um, and I will note real quick, because I don't know if I have in a previous video, the board snakes, which I find irritating. But it makes sense, because that is that you're, you're traveling up the path. And if you have to pick your thing up and place it on the next row, it's irritating. But as you're trying to increase your numbers, you're constantly questioning yourself. So let's go ahead and put that there. And this is a card game, so we're going to have some cards here to look at. Uh, I am a fan that they give you extra baggies. I'm not sure why they do that, but they do. So we've got two little stacks of cards here. We've got... The uh, influence tracks that are here, that's, that was part of the point of this, was to add uh, the, the influence mechanic, if you will. Still recording audio? Yeah, okay. Uh, so that was kind of the point of this expansion, was to use the influence mechanic. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll, we'll figure out more about that in just a minute. And then of course, your little clear reactor cubes. And... Go to the other camera. I'm going to show you real quick. This is how you would start the game, apparently. Like that. Unless you're one of the races that has like a third one. And then I guess you can just finagle it like that. Eh. Do whatever works for you, you know? Um... This is one of those boxes that has a cute little insert in it that I find irritating. You could have made the box this big. Uh, you would have cost you... You would have had to fold your uh, your booklet in half and print it to, to spec. But there's nothing that would have caused this outpour. So I wanted to clarify that too, that I obviously must have sat on it or maybe something at the, the cup or during shipping but it was too much weight for it. Um... So, out of the token bag that they gave us here, here's the little black things. These represent the ships uh, that were there. And for whatever reason, I think uh, they they must have finally noticed that miniatures are a thing. And then they wanted their own for a game that really doesn't need them. But I guess it's a cute thing if you want it. Um, and then, of course, there are fives and one currency notes in there. Um... Break this out real quick. Now, what is confusing is there only there's only six of these influence tracks, so I'm not sure what the intent was with that. Uh, and then, if I remember correctly, the original colors were blue, yellow, red, and green, and then they added purple and orange. So they've left off unless this is. 
Oh, no, these are not for individual players. Um, these are for people building under the different resources. That's why there's only uh, five colors and then a white one for that. So business, military, recreation, and what is this one? Discard a card to build a power reactor to gain money. Um, and there's only a set amount of those. Uh, of spaces on each of those influence tracks. Now, if we look at the little hex tokens that came in the bag as well. So we have the black piece, which is, uh, and, and the white piece, which are the seventh and eighth players. You can tell that that's what they're intended for because they have the 50 plus markers on the back side. So these definitely go with the board. We have this little black and white flippity coin, which I'm not sure why. Um, on, if we go to the other camera, in the original game you had something like this, but it was a little token to tell you where things were, and you flipped it over, and it would actually have the individual arrows. Maybe they realize you don't, all you need is a marker. Like, you could do this with a cube as you go through the four stages of the game. So maybe that's what that's for. I'm not entirely sure. Now, for these little hex pieces that apparently go on the influence track, uh, there are, it looks like, I could be wrong, one of these for each of the races. And they've got little cool pictures on there that kind of represent them. But uh, I'm not, I can't piece together right off the bat how they go on there. So let's go ahead and put these here and we'll go ahead and throw some down. But just for the record, like this is how I'm seeing the intent. For these go. All right, this is a card game, so where would we be without the cards? Now it is, I guess, not important to know, but worthy of note that uh, these cards are ugly little square cards. And I say ugly little square cards in the most loving way possible because I actually don't mind this. I hate tiny cards, let me say that. But the fact that these are square, they're about double the width of uh, the Ticket Riot original cards or the uh, Super Dungeon like Explore cards. Um, it gives it just enough weight or width that I, I don't have a problem holding these in my hand. Um, Okay, of course we got some military, we've got some business. More diplomatics. And I'll put it on camera in a second. There's the recreational. Uh, and oddly enough, like in this game, it really seems like the recreationals tend to be the better scoring points. Uh, so we've got rec, we've got administration. Okay, so here's the new ones. Oh, these match the pictures that are on the tokens, the hex tokens that we had. Okay, and then there's the, the reactors. Main reactors, power reactors. Oh, it's standalone for two players. So that's why you have the black and white tokens. Um, and then it only comes with two main reactors in the box. Because the other, all the plastic stuff we saw came separately. They're, um, they, they, I don't think they're going to be released for individual... Um, consumption, or purchase? Purchase, sure. I, I think it's going to go a different way with it. Um, but they are the black and white reactors. Let me get these here, um, and we'll leave. I'll we'll just start covering up this board. But I definitely want to show this off, because a black reactor, that looks really cool. And then the white reactor, which is pretty much what I was expecting. I don't know. I If you asked me what a black reactor looked like, I wouldn't have guessed the other one. But this is the white one. Real quick, here's some of the art. I could go through and read every card to you, but I, I don't think we're going to do that. <laughs> uh, so we'll just put these here.
These are the new ones. Now, I don't know if these are supposed to be diplomats or what, but they're obviously like some kind of personnel in charge of that. And they've got two sides to them. Um, okay, I thought one side was just a backing, the other side was not. But there are a couple of these that don't have anything on the, on the one side. So let's split those off real quick. Oh, okay, all of them except for um, the the Gar Garnethek Knock and the Minarin uh, are one-sided. And these are dependent on how many people are playing. Um, so in the two-player version, they've got one set of rules, and the three-player, they've got the other. So, like, for example, the Minarin. Um, at the beginning of your next turn, discard a card from the available ones, then look at the discard pile, take a card from it, and put it in its place. I don't like stuff... Oh, well, the discard pile makes sense. Never mind. And say that you use, like, the extra special powers, because I like using the, the all-in uh, mod, which means that you don't really have that. Um... High Athian put up energy on a power reactor you control, gain one. Okay, so, like, these rules are cute, but they don't mean anything without knowing what these actually are or whatever. Um, like, the, the Nick Duffs one is put or a, put a remove a ship in the other player's station, put or remove a ship in your station. Um, and the ships have to be ambassador ships, so we gotta go to the rules. Okay, so after reading the rules... These orange cards are advisors. The way these work, and I'll go to example here, is they're drawn randomly at the beginning of the game. They fit inside these influence tracks. Now, you would find his. So they are for each race, but it's because each race has their own advisor. It doesn't necessarily mean that the... Okay, the rules don't actually say that you have to use only the ones for the races being played. Because when you play, you're normally representative of a race. And to me, I, that would be go without saying, saying you only you play, with, play the with the races that are involved. involved. But this kind of says, says just, just go, go with, with it. it. It doesn't, it doesn't specify. specify. So, so how true that, that as you like. But the point is, is that if you build something, in this case power reactors, uh, there you can move the influence towards you. These tracks sit between the, the players. And so that means that if you're playing more than two players... You can't ever get all the influence. You can only get the influence for the tracks adjacent to you, which makes a lot of sense. So you're just pushing or pulling that one advisor towards you, and then each advisor has a special bonus that you can get at the end of the round. That does not just mean points. It means, like, an energy cube to a reactor or something like that. Spaceships! I'll just call them cock blocks. Honestly, I can't ever re imagine referring to them purely as spaceships. What they will do is they will block squares and other people's space stations, or yours, and prevent locations from being built there. So they're just blocking up construction. Um, I, the idea is that the spaceship docking always has to be on the outside, and you have to shoo them away before you can build there. Squatter's rights, you know? Uh, surprisingly, that's all there is, and that's fine for a new expansion. That's more than enough. Uh, the fact that they gave us all that many new cards uh, really is interesting. Um, I'm real close to having a white box it, but there's so, so many other things that I don't know how I feel about doing that. And I run it out of white boxes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's Among the Stars Revival. Um, I'm looking forward to playing with some of these elements. I can see them being troublesome. What I do like is that none of them seem to contradict or, or prevent anything else. Like, the, the biggest problem with this game is the dispute tokens or the dispute cards uh, where you can actually, like, be mean to each other. Spaceships are another way of doing that. But... You can't play with all the dispute cards at once. It's very, it makes it very awkward. Um, but it does add more rounds to the game. So if you want your games to last a little longer, you can play with them. Just don't try to play with all of them. Uh, but I highly recommend this and uh, any of the uh, among the stars expansions, especially the ones that let you get more players, especially for larger gaming groups. I think that draft games where you can play uh, several people at the same time definitely help out. With the, with the flow of the game, things like draft mechanic games like Seven Wonders or Among the Stars are great large person games because 
you're not waiting for seven other people to go before you play. All eight players can play at once. And as long as everybody's up to date on what everyone's doing, maybe you need a little bit more familiarity with the game. Great. But it works out. But until you see me next time, this has been an unboxing for Among the Stars Revival. I am Camerai, and that's game over. If you want to see anything else we're up to, go to click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.